If you were a follower of mine, this video is no surprise to you. I have been playing Dungeons & Dragons for a little over a year now, and I've been drawing them since day one. So you have probably seen them on my Instagram or my Twitter, but today is a video where I explain to you who my characters are and what adventures lay ahead of them. In recent years, Dungeons & Dragons has made kind of a comeback, but if you have no idea, Dungeons & Dragons is a tabletop role-playing game where you create a character, you choose a race and a class, and you get to be that character with all of your friends. I thought that this video might be cringe and I might not ever make it, but then I saw the Amazing and Amarichu make a video on it, so I was like, F it, why not? I will say that one of the hardest things about Dungeons & Dragons is getting a group of people that you all want to play Dungeons & Dragons and you all have time in your busy week to get together every once in a while. But Kelsey... I want to play Dungeons & Dragons, but I don't have any friends. Well, little guy, it's a good thing that this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends! And you don't have to buy any of the nerdy books because this game is completely free. And also, there's a storyline with amazing voice actors? Holy sh**. You can totally be a strategizer, or you can just do what I do and just pick the most powerful eye candy and level them up as much as possible. The game on its own is already competitive enough, but now the newest boss is coming to raid it with its biggest and craziest yet, a Hydra! You know, a Hydra, the thing with six different heads, each one a complete boss battle all on its own. The head of decay will slowly weaken your team. It has attacks and stuff, but every time you heal one of your own champions, they actually lose health. And it's a pain in my ass! <laughs> that would be bad enough, but they can also use a life barrier buff, which gives it like a shield over its head. And if you can't break the shield in time, it just fully heals. But the head of wrath, it gets angry. Angrier than me. It taunts my team, but after you've hit it like about 15 times, done really good damage to it, gives itself a scary buff called Vengeance, which triples its attack power. So you need to be careful about letting it get to that point, or your team's just gonna die. Raid is also giving away a super limited edition champion to every player in the game. Some of you may recognize him already. It's esports legend and Navi superstar Simple. Between now and January 28th, 2022, Simple's limited edition champion is available for free for both new and old players to raid. All you have to do is log in for seven days between now and January 28th, and he's yours. There's seriously never been a better time to get started. If you hit the link in my description, you'll get an epic champion, Tyrell. 200,000 silver, one energy refill, one XP boost and one ancient shard so you can summon sexy, I mean awesome champions as soon as you get in game. Just click the link in my description below. Thank you so much for Raid for sponsoring this video and now let's actually get on with it. Before I played D&D myself, I was aware of it like from Stranger Things. I knew what Critical Role in Dimension 20 was, but I never really watched any. That is until Joey introduced me to a bunch of his nerd friends that were in eSports. So <laughs> if you think Dungeons and Dragons is cringy, get ready for a bunch of League of Legends players. <laughs> but eventually we found ourselves a group of people that were willing to play D&D. Oh my God. How fun would it be to play Dungeons and Dragons? Oh my god, that would be so fun. Do any of you know how to play? No, no an idea. idea. And we just dove right in. We were all beginners. Uh, such beginners, in fact, that we had pre-made characters in a pre-made campaign, which actually is a book that you can buy, The Lost Mine of Fandelver, which I think the McElroy brothers have played, which I think is the Adventure Zone series, or at least it's based on it. I don't actually know because I haven't watched that series, which was a good thing because I meant no spoilers for my campaign. My soon-to-be husband played Salazar, a silver fox who got a little too old for adventuring at the end. But it was a fighter. Not like a tough cookie. He sucked. But his class was, he was a fighter. 
which is also what I played, the human fighter Kosif, which I have drawn many times over, but she has evolved a lot since I began first playing her. Because all of these characters were pre-made, I didn't really have a choice in her backstory, but now that we've finished our campaign and it's over, I figured her out a lot more. From her description, she was from a small town that got obliterated by a volcano, and ever since then her family has been just scraping by, and for a long time became a ship became a ship hand down at the docks. However, when the campaign first started, Kosev got fired from the docks for standing up to a boss that was kind of an asshole. So without a job and one of the other characters needing people to do a job, Kosev was so down to join. I won't say anything that happens in the campaign just because if any of you are currently or wanting to do that campaign, I will not spoil anything for you. But since it's ended, our lovely DM has decided to make a season two, if you will, completely by themselves. So that was just the description that I was given but all of her looks and character design I came up with myself. And I was also thinking, what happened on those docks that got her fired? Who was her boss? It's gonna be an ex-girlfriend. <laughs> and then I made Captain Voss, which she kind of went a little crazy, doing a lot of shady shit that Kosev was not very cool with. <laughs> and so the day that she got fired was also the day that they had broken up. If she does make an appearance in the second campaign, I will 100% be romancing that bitch. I didn't make you just so that you wouldn't ever come up again. But other than that, I feel like Kosev is kind of a normal, straightforward, white bread kind of fighter. But then one day, Joey came to all of us and was like, hey, after this campaign, why don't I try and DM? Everyone was so excited and we only played one session, and that was the end. We're starting it back up though, but I got to actually create this one, and I fell in love with her. But because we had so much time between when we made the characters to now, I kind of gave her a long backstory, which I will happily share with you right now. This is Valak Locaria, a tiefling rogue, the edgiest character I could have ever made. Valak has Kinda like dirty issues. Let's just start with her childhood, shall we? Valak was born into a wealthy family with her father, mother, and her sister, Hope. And while growing up, she was in kind of a private, prestigious kind of school, and she made friends with a half-elf boy named Liar. It's spelled like that because his parents were like famous musicians. This liar kid, a little rascal, but Valak and him were like two peas in a pod. But when the two started getting in a little more trouble, Valak's father decided that liar was not a very good influence. So he took it upon himself to fire Liar's parents, make them homeless so that Liar couldn't go to the school anymore. And that was the last time Valak had seen him. As her and her sister grew up in the later years, Valak realized how cruel and how evil her father can be. He's done a lot more shady shit than just like firing her friend's parents. So she took it upon herself to assassinate him. However, her mother caught her right after the act and rather than killing Valak. She had told her that she was banished from her hometown and that she may never show her face ever again or she would kill her. So she took just the things on her back and left her mother and her sister in that city. In the next arc, Valak is now on her own and she goes to one of the biggest cities in the entire world in Waterdeep, surviving as a little criminal on the run, not knowing whether her mom hates her, probably, or whether if Hope knows anything. But her sister might know that she killed her dad, but she can never see Hope again and she's on her own until she finds liar because his whole life was ruined and he wants to start beef with Valak because it was her dad that ruined his life but then she breaks the news that I killed my dad holy shit I mean oh f I uh, okay. Damn. So with the two reunited they could continue their hijinks together except this time 
There's a lot more felonies involved. For the next couple years, Liar taught Balak exactly how to survive as a criminal. They found themselves in a giant mess with people they probably shouldn't be messing with. Some shit goes down, and the Liar, being the wonderful person that he is, covers Balak's ass and he is thrown in one of the biggest prisons in the world. And she doesn't think that she could break him out this time. So I'm just gonna go find your bail money. Uh, I'll be back though, I promise. You're the best. F then her third arc. <laughs> Valak has decided to kind of stay clear of Waterdeep. Even though that she knows Liar isn't gonna tell them anything, they're probably out looking for her. She finds herself near a small little halfling village. After failing to steal from a tavern, she's forced to work for a man named Harem. However, Harem kind of becomes more like a father figure to her. Not one that she's gonna kill, but the one that she deserved. Even after she had repaid her debts, she loved being with Harem for such a long time that she spends a couple months there. That This is one of the places that felt like home to her. And then one day Harem is like, you repaid my debt, you don't need to work here anymore. And, uh, actually, I want to stay here longer. No, I think you need to leave. You're kicking me out? Yes, but because I know that you don't belong here. Oh god, are you putting me up for adoption? No, a lot of adventurers come in here and I see the way that you look at them and listen to their stories. I know that you have the capability to be your own hero. You know my story. I killed my dad. My friend is in prison. I was a criminal for so long. If you want to make up for all the bad things you did, you need to go do some good in the world. And I know you can do that. And so, Balak heads out again, and that's where the campaign starts. It starts in a tavern, like almost every campaign starts, where Valak is just sitting there waiting for someone to ask for help. And that's it. I don't know what comes next. I don't know what's gonna be the rest of their story for either of them. That's kind of not it. Um, <laughs> I decided that if Joey can do it, I can do it. I like making characters. I like world building. I like role play. I. Can I just say that out loud? And then I proceeded to realize how much f***ing work you have to put in to do this. But maybe when my campaign is finished, if you guys would like to hear it, I could do a video about that. Those are my characters so far. I've really been enjoying playing it. I even DM'd a campaign for my little sister and her friends. I'm glad that D&D is making a comeback. I have too many books. I spent too much money and too much time on this, but it was worth it. I really love playing it. If you've been kind of on the fence about it, I really encourage you do it because there's just so much to learn and it's so fascinating and fun and it can be as dark and edgy or as stupid and silly as you want it to be. But without further ado, I want to thank my patrons, Air Carlos, Hellhound Havoc, and Lucy. I want to thank Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching. I really appreciate you and I love you. In a very platonic way, of course. So hopefully I will see you next time. Bye!